Hello. I've been a great fan of this device. It's a solder um, pump. Ah! And it pulls solder through there. So this is a heated element and it pulls solder into there with its own internal vacuum pump. And there's two kinds of these relatively cheap pumps you can buy. One where they build the vacuum pump into the unit, which makes it a bit bulkier, possibly noisier. And one where you get a separate unit with the vacuum pump in there. But it suffers a bit because it's got such a long pipe work that it doesn't necessarily get as much vacuum as you want quickly. This actually does. It does a great job. Let's do a bit of desoldering. So this is a scrap circuit board and I'm going to salvage some of the buttons, that the, the key buttons here that haven't been used too much um, because I found them handy for things like repairing remote control key fobs. So, melt the solder. One thing that's really important, I think, is to make sure it's well melted before you press the desolder button, the vacuum button. I think if you rush it, you're in danger of damaging the PCB or also clogging up the nozzle. So, that does a great job. Now, you might say, well, why am I mentioning all this? Well, this has been out of action for a while. I had this, I bought this um, oh, probably 18 months ago and I had a problem within a year that the element failed and I had to replace the element. Uh, and then a few weeks ago, probably about six weeks ago now, the element failed again and it's been out of action. And the way you can tell the element fails, it just doesn't get hot and the light stays on. And regardless of this setting, it just stays on and the element stays cold, but the thing will pump. And you can see it's going out now, so the it is getting to temperature and switching off. So that's all fine. Only thing is, I'll just switch it off. The element failed, and I ordered a new one. That's all true, but I haven't changed it yet. The element came in today from China and when I went to fit it I thought I'll just check, just confirm that it's not working. Lo and behold, it fixed itself. Great, so an intermittent fault on the heater element. Uh, so that makes me think, what do I do? Well, I don't want something that's going to let me down. So I'm inclined to change the element anyway. Right. Then I've got that one, maybe if I need it one day, at least I've got something that might work. Um, because it takes so long for these elements to arrive. So I'm inclined to replace it. I don't want to have the situation where one day I need the thing and it doesn't work. Right, so I'm going to let this cool down. Uh, of course, this isn't as it came from the factory now, because I've changed the element once already. But we'll let it cool down. We'll also change, uh, we'll take the... Uh, tip off the end. This is the chamber where the scrap solder goes. And you obviously need to empty that out every so often. Right, so we'll change the tip. Something it does come supplied with is some pokey tools to poke down the end of here should it get all gummed up uh, and this is something you need to do when it's hot of course not now because it's actually cooled down Okay, so what do we have here? This flex actually isn't the best and I am considering changing that for a better quality cable. There's our motor vacuum pump, the element we need to change. So we have to 
desolder these wires from the PCB. And we've got, I believe it's the wires to the element here and the wires to the um, thermocouple are there. Okay, so that pulls off the back. So it'll go onto there later. We have an earth contact too, which screws onto here. Okay, so we have withdrawn that. Let's desolder these four wires. So we go blue, red, and then two white. If you need a desolder pump to do this, you've got a problem. That's the old one, which may or may not be in good working order, but we'll replace it anyway. Here's our replacement. They've left some very long tails on these wires, so they need trimming down. Okay, I think if we undo this screw here, we get slightly better access. It might make the job slightly easier. Let's do that. Okay, this earth contact needs to go on the, there's a plastic piece there, so we need to get the earth contact on this side of that plastic strip, otherwise it won't fit in there neatly. Alright, that's all sitting nice and level, so we can refit these screws now. Right, let's put in this earth contact. And yes, you do feel like you need a desolder pump to clean these pads that you're going to solder onto, but we'll have to use desolder braid or similar. Okay, that's uh, fitted. I had to take the circuit board off here so I could get to both sides. Though this is a double-sided PCB, I have a feeling it may not be through-plated. So uh, it was a little bit fiddly. Okay, I think we have it all ready to reassemble. So PCB's been refitted, connections made, cleaned up my um, desolder flux. I just need to lay these cables in so they don't foul the button. Earthing contact is made, rubber seal is fitted on the back of the element. Okay, that looks better. The cables are avoiding the edge of the housing with the vacuum chamber. That looks right. So that's a small screw there that goes into the housing for the element. Right, you can see that appears here. We can refit the um, chamber where the uh, waste solder goes. Good. Plug it in and confirm that this controls. I'll set it to a low temperature initially. That's a minimum 350. So let's try that initially. It smells like it's getting hot.
Now you might say, you know, 350 Celsius is quite a high temperature for soldering, but of course you're desoldering, you need a higher temperature. You'll see it, when that light goes out, it's controlling. A little bit of smoke is a good sign that's getting hot. I'm going to switch it off. I'm not sure if that's controlling. A little bit nervous. It's like overheated. It's certainly pretty hot. I'm a little bit nervous that's not controlling. Oh look, it's controlling, there we are. It it went out. Seems to always be coming back on. I'd like to see that go on and off in a proper fashion. On. I want to see it go off without my pressing a button. No, it's not. It only seems to control when I'll put the button. That's a bit worrying, isn't it? Hmm. Is it the right sort of temperature? I think it's getting too hot. I'm not happy with this. <clears throat> I think it's getting too hot. Bother. What have I done wrong? It might be, you know, because of this board not being through plated, that I have soldered the um, sense wires here for the thermocouple nicely on this side of the board, but less nicely on the other side. And because they're not through plated, I think one of them might not be making contact. So let's resolder those on this side of the board. Okay, let's put that back together again. Hopefully that overheat hasn't done too much harm. Of course, that wouldn't have done the element any good at all. Ow, that's still quite hot. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do one more thing that I should have done before I powdered up last time. We should check that the uh, ground connection is made. 
through to the plug. Okay, I set the minimum temperature. Let's see if it controls properly. I do hope so. Up to soldering temperature just about. Light's gone off. Let's turn the temperature up. Yes, that's controlling properly now. So I've turned up the temperature. It should go off. That looks much better. Wait for it to come on. Yes, that's working properly. So now I could quite happily desolder something on here. Um, 370 it's set to, that's probably about right. 370, 380, something in that area. That's controlling properly. I'm happy. We've fixed that properly. It's controlling properly. Turn the temperature down. It goes out. Yes, that's working properly. So that's the, um, what's this model number again? It's the S993A 100 watt desoldering station. I think they're great value for money, but obviously had a few problems with elements. Um, but I have a spare element now, I suppose. So. I would suggest, though, that um, if somebody in the UK was to import some of those elements so that you didn't have to buy them from China every time it fails, then they would be onto a winner because um, people don't necessarily want to wait, as I waited, something like six weeks for that element to arrive. So I hope you've uh, learned something from this experience, even if it's only that these PCBs are not through plated, so be a little bit careful if you have to change the element. Do please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the future. Bye for now.